Hi there. Today I'd like to share with you a fabulous fleury, uh, so a Cru Beaujolais. Uh, this is La Chapelle des Bois, and this is from uh, Domaine Jules de Journay, um, producer, somebody called Fabien Duperret. And uh, Fabien set up his domain in 2007. Uh, he bought vineyards, some fantastic old vineyards, in fact, some of them up to, with vines up to 140 years old. So a really choice parcel of seven hectares. Um, and Fabian, up until then, had been a, um, a wine trader, a fine wine trader in, um, in Burgundy. Uh, and he was offered the opportunity to become a wine grower and, and decided that actually this would be maybe not a very uh, remunerative um, adventure, but would, would be um, really enjoyable. So he, he set about um, creating his, his own domain. So he has vineyards in Fleury, Chena, and uh, Moulin Avon. Um, and they're absolutely sort of top quality vineyards. And he um, has uh, made it his um, aim to, to produce some of the best quality uh, Beaujolais around. So these aren't cheap wines, I'll, I'll warn you that. Um, but um, he keeps le yields incredibly low. He has really good vineyards and he, he separates out parcels like the Chapeau de Bois, whereas um, many, many producers would um, you know, put it all into one single cuvee. Um, the wines are very gently handled. Um, I note this is 13% alcohol and the, the alcohol levels on the wines of his I've seen haven't been particularly high, so I suspect picking is relatively early. Um, you're using old vine fruits, he's keeping um, uh, yields down low. I've, I've read as low as 25 hectolitres per hectare, which is sort of below what's required for a Grand Cru um, in, in Burgundy. So these are really, um, really reduced yields for, for the region. Um, the winemaking has changed since 2007. This is, a, this is a 2012, so this has a nice bit of age there. And, and he, um, Fabian is, is making wines that he wants to, to be aged for you know, a couple of decades. Um, but um, since he's made these wines, which this would probably have spent um, 24 months aging in old oak um, to, to soften it out, to round the wine out. Now he doesn't use oak at all, in fact, so he's just using um, glass um, uh, storage vessels and, and concrete tanks. Um, but at this stage, there would have been old oak. Um, at the stage at which this was made, the wine would probably have had a very high proportion of whole bunches and with the stems staying in there. Um, he's redu reduced the amount of that that he does. Um, so we're talking about a high quality um, Cru Beaujolais here. So, so let's, let's have a look at the wine. Firstly, the color. Now this is a wine that has lovely dark pigmentation. I mean, it's almost a sort of a black red color and yet the depth of that color, I, I can see straight through it. It's not even approaching opaque. So, um, you know, good, in t good um, depth of color, but or good density of color, but not necessarily depth. Um, so, let's have a sniff. Gosh, the aromas are, this is a brooding wine from, from what you're smelling there. Um, you're not sort of getting bursting cherry or banana aromas that you might get, you might associate with, with um, a lighter weight Beaujolais. Um, the, the aromas there, they have a meatiness. There's a, um, a rich core of, of dark fruit, you know, dark um, plum, damson, that sort of side of thing, but also a, a more developed prune note. Um, there are earthy touches. There's absolutely no hint of oak whatsoever. Um, perhaps a touch of truffle, maybe the tiniest hint of coffee. So let's have a taste. The wine is mouth filling and at the same time has really lovely acidity. Um, there's a freshness that's making my mouth sing and yet there's a real richness and a, a density to this. 
the tannins are incredibly smooth. They're, they're um, silky fine, almost sort of cocoa powder like. Um, and yet there is quite a, um, a grip there. There's a, a, a sort of a dustiness, sort of a, almost like a touch of graphite, which would suggest um, a little bit of toasty oak in there. Um, the flavours are relatively straightforward, but they're they're generous, they're plentiful. They're not they're not sort of soft and juicy. Yeah, they're supported by lovely acidity. Um, but there's a sort of a savoury, meaty note underlying this uh, mature, red, plummy fruit. Um, and that's going on beautifully there. Um, look, this is a, a wine made with incredible um, sort of meticulous care. Evidently, um, extraction is sort of simply through very gentle pumping the, the juice back over um, the, the fermenting fruit. There's no um, treading or anything like that um, and it shows the finesse of the texture is it's fabulous the acidity is lovely and fresh and the flavors are really lasting beautifully there's a sort of a, a dense almost sort of licorice note to the finish um, I mean it doesn't have the spice but the texture could almost be sort of something from um, Hermitage or something like that in the Northern Rhone. It's it, it's a, a lovely dense wine. So yes, um, Fleury La Chapelle de Bois, 2012 vintage from uh, Domaine Jules de Journay. Thank you very much for watching. Bye now.